come on, I wonder if I could just get you all to stand to your feet in this worship. Hallelujah. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy. Hallelujah. There is none like you, oh God. There is none greater than you, oh God. We love you tonight, oh God. We thank you tonight, oh God. Come on, I need some saints of God to just begin to thank him tonight. Hallelujah, for you have been good unto us, and we thank you tonight. We don't take any of your benefits for granted tonight, but we say thank you, thank you, thank you, that you do all things well. Hallelujah. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your name, oh God. We give you glory and honor and praise, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you tonight because you are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy. There is none greater than you, oh God. There is none higher than you, oh God. And we just say thank you tonight. We do not take any of your benefits for granted, but we say thank you, Father. You have been a good God unto us, and for that we are thankful. Amen. Amen. Matthew 11 and 12, last week took on new meaning for many of us. This scripture says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent do what? Take, Take it by force. Yeah. And so, um, Nakia, you were right on yeah. in your prayer tonight because we do know that, that yeah, you know, six days ago there was a horrific attack in South Carolina. So, or, so surely, um, until from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Stuff always comes up against the kingdom of God. But our rally cry is not to cower down, not to give up, not to cave in and quit. Because it says, and the violent take it by force. And so our response to that type of horrific act is not one of fear, not one of, oh my God, what we going to do. But it's, it's th in this season, a holy boldness ought to spring up in the lives of God's people. We ought to be more determined to pray, more determined to take authority, more determined to be the change agents that God has called us to be. Amen? And in this season, God is strategically placing many of his people who are sold out. Somebody say sold out. Sold out to him. He's placing us in strategic places so that we can be the light in dark places. Amen. And so we have, we understand that that this scripture just just became even you know not that it wasn't always true, but he, the events of last week um, um, help us to grasp that we are in a war. Look at your neighbor and say we are in a war. Now I know many many people signed up for the blessings and many people signed up you know, to, to get blessed and, and be able to go to heaven and all of that fun stuff. But until you get there, we are in a war. Amen. And so that's why the Bible says man ought to always pray and not faint. Look at your neighbor and say, you cannot faint in this season. Hallelujah. Good evening to our live stream audience. We are so thankful for you joining us week in and week out. And we just pray that you are being blessed by the lessons and blessed by the services as you are able to um, join us. And we just are thankful that you would even turn tune in uh, with us tonight prayerfully. Some of our Acra family is watching via live stream. So, y'all, you know, I really want those of you that are watching via live stream, I really want you to begin to text us, email us. Let us know you're watching. Let us know, you know, if this ministry is being a blessing to you. Amen. All right. Now, Kia kind of messed me up, so I'm going to have to go here for a minute. Uh, we we going back to Romans now. I I just had to say, you know, God God to me is amazing, yes, he is. and I know He is to y'all too. But it just see, and it, and, it, and it shouldn't be shocking. So let me say it this way: God has this ability to know what you need when you need it. What? Sometimes we don't think He does because we don't kind of see it clearly. 
and especially, watch this, when you have to go through adverse things. I'm reading Dr. Sam Chan's book right now called Leadership Pain, and it is such a blessing to me. I wish he had wrote it like 10 years ago. Because one of the things that I don't think we clearly get in the body of Christ is that many times our growing moments are birthed out of pain. Think about your own life. (laughs) We get to know God better. We pray more. We're a whole lot more focused many times as a result of pain. But we tend to live our lives never wanting pain to come. We want things to be just wonderful. We want everything to be easy. We want everybody to like us. We want everything to just go. We want, the, what we, we want God to line up with what we want. Amen. Amen. God, if you would just do this and uh, we could do this and everything would be all right. Anybody ever prayed like that? But sometimes, look at your neighbor say sometimes. Now, the growth process, say that. The growth is going to involve some pain. Now, it's, it's interesting, and, and, and please hear me when I say this, we have to, in a flash, make the decision how we're going to respond to pain. Y'all listening? Because as quickly as the pain comes, that's how quick the enemy is right there to try to cause you to react negatively. So, so we have to quickly decide, and in, I mean, like, in, in seconds, when the pain comes, we have to decide how we're going to handle this pain. Am I going to let it control me, or am I going to take authority over it? Hello, somebody. Hello. So, so, so we, in this season, somebody say, in this season. Live stream audience, hear this. In this season, we have to learn how to master pain. We have to learn, watch this, how to, Kava used to say this all the time. I think I'm just now getting a revelation of it. You have, we have to learn as children of God, we have to learn how to make friends with the fire. Now, y'all know we don't do that. We run from the fire. The fire come, the pain come, the first thing we want to do is lead a church. Amen. But when we learn how to be still, somebody say be still. still. When we learn that Psalms 46 is still true, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And then it goes on a little further down that says be still and know that I am God. And so if we are in him, even in times of pain, we can trust him to not only bring us through, but to bring us to a new place in him. Pain is not always bad. As a matter of fact, one of the, one of the things, and I, I'm going to get back to Romans in a minute, but one of the things, one of the, one of the um, cases that he cites in the book, this just blessed me. All of us have heard about leprosy. We all know leprosy was that, that, that disease that they talk about in the Bible where you just walk down the street and something might fall off. Finger might fall off, nose, whatever. Um, and and, and, and he, te- he, talks, he gives a story about this little girl. She was um, two. Well, actually, she wasn't even quite two. And she was in her, her mother had fed her, changed her, whatever, put her in her playpen. The mom went out of the room to go do something else, comes back into the room, and there's red all over everywhere. And the mom is like, I didn't give her no pain. Here this little girl has bit off the tip of her finger, and she's using the blood to play in. She not crying. She Come on, she had that disease where you don't feel any pain. Now, on the surface, that might sound like a pretty cool thing to have. But then when you realize that when you don't have the ability to feel pain, you could get in major. Now, this little girl is, is, is older. She's like a teenager. She's had to have both legs amputated. 
that you've had to have um, all of the fingers on one hand amputated because she keeps doing stuff to herself and she don't have a, she's not aware of pain. Watch this. So she don't know how to make adjustments. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, pain will teach you how to make adjustments. Now, you know, I crack up every time I hear the word pain because it reminds me of the Ohio players. And <laughs> yes. And so so I really, I just, I, I just felt like it was necessary to start this with, you know, instead of running, instead of wanting to throw in the towel and quit, instead of getting mad and going on the attack, sometimes we have to just say, okay, God, you allowed this for a reason. There is something you trying to teach me in this, and I'm going to be still until I know what you are saying. Amen? All right, so Romans, let, we're going to go to uh, 14. I believe that's where we left off last week, but let's stop by 12 for a minute because this is really the crux of why we've been teaching this study for so long in the book of Romans. Y'all at Romans 12? Let's read verses 1 and 2. It says what? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, how? That you do what? As a what? As a what kind of sacrifice? Okay, so, and, and what else? Holy? Uh-huh. Okay, so he starts out in this 12th chapter. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of of God by the it's going to take the this ain't something you just wake up in the morning and decide you're going to do amen over there in lamentations that what does it say it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed for his compassions fail not great is his faithfulness right is that what it say in lamentations three there his mercies are new how often every morning, every morning. so 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 Come on, because that right, because you need the Lord's mercies every morning. We cannot, we live in such a crazy world, we can't survive on yesterday's mercies today. Amen. So then here it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies that God has given you, are, are y'all listening? By the mercies that God has extended to you, by the mercies that God has made available to you, I beseech you, therefore, by his mercies that you present your body as a living sacrifice. What is, he say, what is Paul saying to us? He is saying to us that in our own self, if we wait on our flesh to want to do this, it's never going to happen. Amen. Anybody ever had to just come to the terms that your flesh don't want what God wants? <laughs> it's not going to ever get saved. It don't want, and it ain't real thrilled about you being saved. <laughs> Truth be told, if flesh could get you not to be saved, he'd be real happy. Because there's still some stuff for every one of us in here. There's still some stuff from our past that flesh is waiting on the opportunity to do again. That's why certain songs take you back to a certain place. Amen. So he's saying, I beseech, <laughs> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, not in your own strength, because in your own strength, you're not going to get there. In your own strength, you might have a good day, maybe two, but if you something going to happen, the enemy going to see to it that somebody say something, do something, suggest something, forget something. Are you are y'all getting me? So he going to see cuz the enemy is no good. Please understand, the enemy you can never make friends with that joker. <laughs> what I at, like Bishop Trotter, I don't know if he pinned it, but that's who I heard say it, so that's who I always give credit for saying it. Sin will take you further than you want to go keep you longer than you wanted to stay and cost you more than you wanted to pay. Now, how many of y'all know that's the whole truth? So the enemy is never going to make it easy. Y'all hear me? He's not going to ever make it easy for us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
we have to get the revelation that we need the mercies of God. Because if you just get up and say, well, this is the day I'm going to present my body to the Lord, trust me, you're not going to get out the front door before you get challenged. <laughs> Phone going to ring, text message going to be on there, something. Somebody going to do something, say something. But if, you, if we do it in the mercies of God, God, you have given me a fresh batch of mercy today. Thank you for that. This ought to be our prayer every morning. Thank you for a fresh batch of mercies. Now teach me in this new mercy that you have given me how to present my body as a living sacrifice. Now, what does sacrifice mean? What does it mean to sacrifice? To give, give up. How come the body of Christ is the only people that don't want to never give up nothing? We want all the blessings of the Lord. Oh, the blessings of the Lord making us, make us, maketh us rich and addeth no sorrow. Yo, okay, but his, this word right here says you got to present your body as a. I'm going to need y'all to scream that. Somebody scream living. living. You don't become a sacrifice after you die. You got to be a sacrifice in your life. Your life has to be sacrificial. So what does that mean? That means I don't get to do just what I want to do because I can. There's a whole lot of stuff I can do. And some of it I'd be right to do. But Paul said all things are lawful. Watch this. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So just because I can don't mean I should. Right. Amen. Teach overseer. <laughs> and this is for all of us. Now, please, I'm not singling nobody out about nothing that you're doing. I'm just teaching the word of God. Amen. If we going to grow in him, there's going to have to be some sacrifices made. Right. Now, we don't want to hear nothing about that. We just want the blessing. God, if I pay my tithes, you're supposed to open up the windows and pour out a blessing. Well, maybe the sacrifice is you got to clean out some stuff so there's some room. And I don't just mean that in the physical, but I mean even in our spiritual lives. Do you understand that as we grow, part of our growth process, hear me, is to do a spiritual inventory? If you ain't grew none in the last five years, you still think and feel the same way about everything that you thought and felt five years ago. So your, your growth process is stunted. And so you have to do a, a spiritual inventory to figure out what the stunted to grow. Amen. Yes. That's right. That's right. It feel right because we're accustomed to it. So then when the Holy Ghost begins to kind of challenge us in that area, then we start rebuking him. <laughs> or we start comparing ourselves to other people where well, everybody else doing it. Or I ain't as bad as so-and-so. I might be this, but they this. <laughs> Hello. So, present, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Say, say that with me. By the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. You need the Lord's help to present your body as a living sacrifice. You need him to show you what to sacrifice. Because here it is. Everybody, for all of us in here, everybody's sacrifice ain't the same. Our issues aren't the same. Our challenges are not the same. Amen. I, I, I use this analogy all of the time. They, they, could cut, they could bring 90 pounds of crack and sit it right here, and I'm just going to look at it. I ain't tempted by it. I don't want it. You understand what I'm saying? But now, now, tell me the Dairy Queen is selling peanut butter parfaits for a dime. Now, that's a whole nother issue because I'm going I'm to I'm end Bible study early so I can get to the Dairy Queen.
I don't know, but I think I should put that in their spirit, don't you? <laughs> that peanut butter parfaits need to be on sale this weekend. <laughs> So then right after, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, somebody say holy. Holy. Please, ma'am, please, sir, don't get it twisted. Holiness is still right. Holy. Pause. (laughs) Y'all got it? That's still the goal. Now, yes, we, we are very accepting. God, God gave us the name Kingdom Grace so that we would be welcoming and accepting and, and create an environment where everybody feels comfortable. Everybody could feel like they could come. That's why we don't do all of that dressing up and all of that stuff because we want people to feel comfortable to come as they are and sit up under the word and let their lives be transformed. But that is not a license to just do whatever we want to do. Amen. Holiness. Somebody say it. Holiness. It's still right. It's still, right. It's still the goal. It's still the goal. Now, we might be at different places towards holiness, but that's still the prize. That's still the goal. Because when we exemplify holiness, then we look like Christ. Amen. <laughs> so a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, <laughs> and then before you can get the big head, he said, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> so don't start thinking so much of yourself just because you got a good you got a good three weeks up under your belt. Don't get it twisted. You still need the mercies of God to stay in it. Amen. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Now that, okay, now that's good. Can I use that for about five, 30 seconds? Because that is exactly how the enemy operates. Sometimes we are walking in the blessed place, and then here come the enemy with some reminder of something that used to be, and instead of staying in the blessed place, we look up and we didn't let that joker take us all the way back over here. Because I'm sure you didn't wake up this morning thinking, well, you know, I'm just going to go back and, and test the waters or whatever. You know, I'm just want to go, I want to go visit. Don't, that never happens. We don't wake up saying this is what we're going to do. So the enemy, through the power of suggestion, somebody say that, the power of suggestion. suggestion. Through the power of suggestion, he tries to take you, whoever said it, off your square, take you back to a place that you said 